This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. We here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Brooklyn, New York, welcomes everyone who has taken the time to join us in our virtual worship experience this morning. We encourage you to participate in the reading of the scriptures, singing the songs, and praying along with us. For in so doing, we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together, even though we are apart from each other physically. We, as a body of believers at St. Paul's, are living into God's vision for us, a faith-based community who not only knows and confess that Scripture is primary, but who knows through the lived experience that it's a lamp onto our feet and a light along our earthly pathway that leads to eternal life with God, our Heavenly Father. We trust that this time together with us would inspire you to go out and make disciples for Jesus Christ as you live Christ-like lives for all to see. Please join me in our call to worship. We come to you, O Lord, from a world of darkness into Christ's world of light. We come to you, O Lord, from a world of weariness into God's strength and hope. We come to you, O Lord, from a slumbering world Strengthened by the Spirit, we come to awaken our souls and watch for the coming of Christ. Our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, United Methodist Hymn Book, number 196, 196. <laughs> Thank you. 
join me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you have promised to be with us no matter what difficult circumstances invade our lives. We lift up our many brothers and sisters in Christ who are facing ex increasingly hard times due to this pandemic. We are watching and waiting for the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We join with the Spirit in praying, Come, Lord Jesus. In these increasingly difficult times, we ask for your strength and courage to face whatever lies ahead, knowing that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, and that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline my ear toward us and grant us thy peace. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thy ear to us and grant us thy peace. And now let's join as we sing together our vision song. We are a transforming community of faith.
Today is the first Sunday in Advent when we light the candle of hope. Let's all join together now as we participate in lighting the first candle of Advent. If ever there was a year that we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year that we have just lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess all around us in the year 2020. All we know that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. Nothing. We really need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope, hope that you meet us even in the mess of our world. Hope, hope that you will still see us. Though we feel we are lost in the rubble, let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Amen. church family, I will be reading from Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. The mountains would tremble before you. And when fire sets ablaze twigs and causes water to boil. Come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, nor ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those 
who wait for him. You come to help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteousness act like filthy rags. We shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins swept us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay. You are the parter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The reading this morning is taken from the United Methodist Hymnal, Psalms 801, Psalms 80. Give here, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth in the presence of Ephraim and Benjamin and Menashesh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayer? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measures. You made us the scorn of your neighbors and our enemies laughed among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade. The mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God the host, look down from the heaven and see have regards for this vine, the stock which your right hand planted. They have burnt it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon those of your right hand. The, one, the ones whom you have made strong in you yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The word of God. A call to confession. As we begin the Advent journey, a time of preparation, we pause to look within ourselves and use this moment to come into God's presence, confessing our sins and seeking his forgiveness. The scripture tells us 
that a broken and a contrite heart God will not despise. And so as we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Christ child, we first prepare our own hearts. Let us be in prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, as we begin to prepare our hearts to receive the one whom you are sending, forgive us, O oh God, for all the times we have missed seeing you among us. Forgive us, O oh God, when we missed seeing a wayward family member. Forgive us, O oh God, when we missed seeing an annoying co-worker. Forgive us, O oh God, for not seeing the nosy neighbor. Forgive us, God, when we grumble at a passerby who's not wearing a mask. Forgive us, O oh God, for the times we have judged others unjustly. Forgive us, Lord, for all the times we have missed seeing you right here among us. Forgive us for all the times that we have doubted your presence with us, when we feel defeated by sickness and disease, when a loved one dies, the loss of a job, unable to pay bills. Forgive us for all the times that we have doubted your presence with us. Forgive us in the name of Jesus, the one who is coming. Forgive us in the name of Jesus, the one who is coming. And now, in the silence of your own hearts, let us make our personal confession to Almighty God. Let us pray in silence.
words of assurance. Hear these words of assurance. Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And now we have come to the moment in our service when we give back to God a portion of the blessings that he has given us. We have so much to be thankful for. And so we take a moment and we just say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let us together recite our scriptural reference taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Each person should give what they have decided in their heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Let us bless the offering. We thank you, God, for your servants who continue to give and give, even during difficult times, oh God, for those who have even increased their giving. Father, we know that you depend upon us. You have no hands but our hands, no feet but our feet. No voices, but our voices, O oh God. And so as we give from the abundance that you have blessed us with, we ask for your blessing upon it, O oh God, that you will multiply it, O oh God, and that you will use our gifts to spread the gospel in our little corner in East Flatbush. We thank you, God, we praise you. We, we adore you for your goodness to us. We say thank you, God. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, church. This, today's reading is taken from Mark 13, verses 24 to 37. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. 
the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of God, to the people of God. Amen. For a few minutes this morning, saints, I would like to share a brief, very brief meditation based on verse 35 through 37 of St. Mark's Gospel that was read by our sister, Harding, and on the theme, be alert, be watchful. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. May none of self get in the way. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, a four-week celebration in our Christian tradition that ends on Christmas Day. Some think of Advent as a time to prepare for Christmas, while others think that Advent is a time when we should get our hearts ready to receive the Christ child. A time of preparation and waiting. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus reminds us why it is important to be watchful while we are waiting. In verse 35 to 37, we read, Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Be watchful. Be alert. Everyone will agree with me that the, the, lock, the lockdown in our cities all across this country due to the pandemic has all of us waiting and watching. Waiting and watching for news on when the vaccine will be available. 
waiting and watching for the positivity rate to go down so we could go back to school and to our, our other businesses. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're watching. If we ever needed Advent, it's now. In the reading from Isaiah, the prophet puts it this way, from Isaiah 64. The prophet says, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did those awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Fitting words for such a time as these. For if we ever needed Advent, it's now. If we ever needed our God to come to us, it's now. People of faith, as we enter this season of preparation and waiting, this season of Advent, let us not forget that the Savior has already come. As the hymn writer says, he left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite his grace, emptied himself of all but love and bled for Adam's helpless race. Saints, sometimes we become so overwhelmed, so tired of waiting, so tired of longing, that we forget that our Savior is right here with us. Emmanuel, God with us. This morning, I really want to encourage us and remind us to be spiritually alert, to be spiritually watchful during these times. We do not want to miss the opportunity to see God among us. We might be tempted. We may get distracted. We may become so overwhelmed that we miss the opportunity to see God right here with us. So let us be always watchful for God's coming among us. As the scripture says, we will never know the day nor the hour. Advent is a time for us to look into our own lives and see how we have been doing with the invitations God has extended to us. The invitation to feed my sheep. Tend my lambs, entertain my angels, pray one for another, advocate for the most vulnerable among us. Let us not be like the disciples who asked Jesus, Lord, when did we see you naked or hungry? When did we see you? While we wait, we must be watchful. We must ask ourselves, is my trust in God strong enough that we can demonstrate patience in our day-to-day -day actions? Is my trust in God strong enough that I'm able to practice and exhibit patience in my day-to-day -day actions. Advent gives us 
the opportunity to examine our lives and see how we can serve God, knowing that the, even the words that we speak to our brother or sister could mean life or death. We have to be watchful. We have to be alert. We must speak life into a brother or sister who during this time might be in a very dark place. Speak life into a sister or a brother who may be giving up because they are experiencing sickness and disease during this time. Speak life. Is our trust in God strong enough during this time that it gives us the confidence to speak life into others? Advent encourages us to live the life of a disciple, always sharing the important message of Jesus Christ. As you have done it to the least of these, you have done it unto me. My brothers and sisters, as we begin this Advent journey, we also have a responsibility to assist others in getting themselves ready to receive the Christ child. We cannot be satisfied that we are preparing ourselves. If we are able to be present in someone else's situation, if we are able to give a word of advice to assist someone in their daily preparation for the Lord, then as disciples of Jesus Christ, we must be watchful so that we do not miss that opportunity to see God right here among us. I, I close with two verses from the old hymn, Watch and Pray. Verse 5, Hear above all, hear thy Lord, him thou lovest to obey. Hide within your heart his word. Watch and pray. Watch as if on that alone hung the issue of the day. Pray that help may be sent down. Watch and pray. Be watchful my brother and my sister, be alert. God is among us right now. Emmanuel, let's not become so fatigued that we miss the opportunity to welcome him. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, as we begin to prepare our hearts to receive the one whom you are sending. Forgive us for all the times we have missed seeing you in our midst. For all the times we have doubted your presence and for all the times we have failed to help others find their way. Forgive us in the name of Jesus the one who is coming. Amen. My brother, my sister, if you have never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, if you have never asked him to take full control, now is the time. Ask Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. He will come. He will be with you. He will help you. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll close in him. Shine, Jesus, shine. From the faith we sing, 2173. benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord grant you peace in your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.
turn this thing around. Gotta turn it around. Gotta turn it around. Gotta turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. Gotta turn it around. Gotta turn it around. Gotta turn it around. Say.